Steve Gross, uh, he looks terrible doing it. Steve Gross, you're talking about uh, other people or him? We got D. Del Valle that just joined us. By the way, Instagram for you guys are getting on. For whatever reason, I didn't have reception, I'm back on. So if anybody's got any questions on um, Facebook or Instagram, we're getting right into the question session. Uh, I give you my thoughts. I want to hear from you um, now, whatever you got on your mind. Okay, how can I get out of my own head? Oh my gosh, I have no idea what you're thinking about for me to help you out with that question. But I would tell you, go watch one video I made a while back. It's called Limiting Beliefs. Just go on YouTube and type in the word Limiting Beliefs. It's the first video that will come up. Everybody has to watch that video, Limiting Beliefs. It was a video I did probably two and a half years ago. So it's an old school video. Go on YouTube, type in the word Limiting Beliefs. Matter of fact, if somebody can go do that and share it over here so other people can see it, go on YouTube, type in the word Limiting Beliefs. It's a value video, share it here so other people can see it. That's a video you must watch, the person that asked me that question. Uh, do you think I should be looking to invest while I'm on active duty Marine? Uh, Ivan Garcia, invest? No. Here's what I'd be doing when, if I was on active duty today. Uh, Ivan, how old are you, by the way? I mean, it's going to take a while for your question to come up, uh, answer to come up. Uh, he asked the question, he's in the Marines, should I invest while I'm in active duty? duty? Uh, Ivan, my answer to you would be the following. While I was in active duty, this is one thing very few people know. Uh, Bradford knows. Bradford is now uh, one of a value tainer with us who's got us on a YouTube channel called Beer, Wine, and Spirits. If you haven't watched, Bradford's my best friend in the world. I got five best friends. He's one of them. And you should go to his YouTube channel and subscribe to his YouTube channel. It's called Beer, Wine, and Spirits. And he goes all over the world learning how to make absinthe, learning how to make wine, learning how to make everything, right? And he goes to the craziest places on how to make wine. When Bradford and I were in the military together, here's what I learned to do in the army, okay? There was a wholesaler I hooked up with on, uh, uh, back then, it wasn't the internet, so you would order, it was an order stuff that you would do. This uh, um, supplement company was called DPS Nutrition, something like that. I went and bought so much supplement from them. I would take orders, I would get it from there and I would start making 10 bucks, 15 bucks, $20. I would sell HMB, creatine, anotestin, nortestin. I would sell all this stuff that I could that, you know, EAS was selling or Muscle Tech was selling or whoever was selling. And I would sell those products. Okay, I'd be selling those products in the army. That's what I was doing in the army. And so I started having customers, but I learned sales. And so if today I'm in the army and there's a YouTube channel like Value Tainment, I would study one, number one, 100% of all the content on Value Tainment, including the case studies on Friday. I'd study it, I'd make a journal and that would be my obsession. I would, I would, I would be obsessed with improving my sales skills, knowing exactly what industry I'm gonna get involved in when I leave the military because you already have discipline. God knows most people in the real world do not have a lot of discipline and Marines, military people do. The only challenge with military people is they're small thinkers. And the reason why they're small thinkers is because the entire time while you're in the military, I want you guys to understand this here. A four-star general in the army after 30 years only makes around 15 grand a year, 15 grand a month. Let me say this one more time. A four-star general in the army only makes 15 grand a month. Let me tell you how difficult it is to be a four-star general. It's probably easier to be a billionaire today than to be a four-star general. And I'm not kidding with you. It's harder to be a, a four-star general than it is to be a billionaire today. You go in the army, you think you're gonna be a four-star general? No way. It is probably harder to be a four-star general than to be in a billionaire today. Now, why do I say that? It's pure numbers on how few people make it to that level. But that person only makes 15 grand a month and they work their asses off and their life's on the lawn all the time. And you become a four-star general because you went through a lot of hell, right? But they learned work ethic, but they're small thinkers. So when military comes out of, uh, uh, when soldiers come out of the military, today making 10 grand a month is a lot of money. So when I got out of uh, the army, my biggest challenge was to figure out a way to make myself think bigger, to relax. I remember the first time I made, you know, ten thousand dollars. I made eighteen thousand four ninety five in May of O two or o, May, of, May of O four. I made eighteen thousand four ninety five. I thought it was insane when I made that money. I'm like, are you kidding me? Somebody paid me eighteen thousand four ninety five. Like, do these guys know who I am? I was scared almost. I mean, what? A, I came home and showed my dad. I made eighteen thousand four ninety five. I was like, what? What are you a drug dealer? I said, I'm dad. I'm not. A, my dad. My mother thought I was a drug dealer. I'm like, mom, I'm selling insurance. What is insurance? What do you mean you're selling insurance? 
I said, I'm telling you, it's just forget about it. But for me, 18495 when your entire family makes two grand, my dad's making two grand, $1,500 a month working at a 99 cent store. What do you mean 18495 I mean, I'm 24 years old, 25 years old, whatever my age was. So if I was, if I was in the military today, man, I would be getting obsessed about mastering the art of selling and studying all this content. And by the way, thank you for your service, brother. Okay, next question. Let's go to Instagram for a question here. Do you think joining the military is a good place to develop work ethic? 100%. I am an advocate for military. Javian Santo. I'm an advocate for military, but not 100% of people. Not 100% of people. I'm just telling you right now. Not 100% of people. Um, I think, you know, so I'm going to give you a, a sneak peek of why uh, my debate with these guys was so heated. First of all, I told them, I said, listen, you keep putting hate on Jesus, but Ayn Rand is your Jesus. Ayn Rand is your God. Oh my gosh, how dare you say something like that? And they were screaming all this. I'm like, listen, I'm just telling you, that's what you're doing. They're, well, you know, that's just crazy. I said, look, I'm not a Mormon. That's what I told them. I says, now, why are you going to Mormon? I said, let me tell you why. And I said this at another conference I was invited to four weeks ago with Nick Vujicic was filled with pastors and Les Brown was and they asked me to speak. And I said the same thing to them. And they wanted advice on, you know, feedback on marketing and all this other stuff. I said, listen, if I was to look at a model of what church is doing the best today, it would be Mormonism. Now, why? And some of you guys are like, oh my gosh, he said Mormons. I've done business with Mormons. There's some of the best people I've done business with. And by the way, no one's probably done research on Mormonism more than me. I read every single, I watch every single one of the God makers. I read their book. I read their, you know, Gordon B. Hinckley. I read all, every single thing about Mormonism I studied. Because I was around them all the time. Mormonism and Scientology. L. Ron Hubbard. I want to know everything about Scientologists because I worked around a bunch of Scientologists. Good people. But I'm going to tell you about what Mormons do well. And I'm going to get to your question because that person asked me the question. The reason why Mormons... The Mormon church grows so well. They're better marketers than any other religion. Christian marketing, they are terrible. First of all, Christians, they're the worst marketers. I'm just telling you right now. They're not on the same page. It's too clickish. Which one are you a part of? Are you part of this? Are you part of that? And, you know, all this other stuff. Um, and Catholics, a lot of times, they're not adapting. Their marketing is too much based on the, you know, the level and the hierarchy set up. It's just, it's, it's not, it's, I'm talking purely business and market. I'm not talking to truth religion. So if I lost some of you guys because you freak out when the word religion comes out, that's your issue. I'm talking marketing. Mormons do it right. The reason why Mormons do it right is the following reason. When a kid turns 18 years old, 19 years old, they go on mission for a year or two years. And what happens when they go on mission for that one year or two years, they learn another language, they learn another culture, they learn about independence. Then they come and go back to school. And nothing in life will ever be as hard as the mission they went on for that one year or two years. And so they're tough. This is why CIA hires Mormons. FBI hires Mormons. John Huntsman, who ran for office as a uh, president, was a Mormon. His father was the author of, both of them wrote books, but one of the best books on sales I ever read was by his father. Uh, Romney Mormon. I mean, they are very, 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 very good at what they do because they learn discipline. So you asked me the question, is it a good idea to go into the military early on? If I ran a country, and if I have a million people that are in the country that I lead, Let's say one day someone says, Pat, we feel you need to have your own country. We'll give you a, mil a million people that want to come to your country. And I'm, I'm going to give, we'll have a filtering system on what kind of people we want. Boys that turn 17, 18 years old, I would want them to go into military for one year. And the reason for that is because what's lacking today is discipline. It really is. And by the way, I, I run a sales organization. And I can tell you, the people I have the easiest time talking to and telling them areas they need to improve in, they either played sports or they were in the military. You know who are the toughest people for me to lead in our company? People who never played sports or were never in the military because they're too sensitive. So every single thing you say to them, it requires 20 minutes of you're so amazing, you're so great, you're so this, you're so that, and then you give them the feedback. And then, oh my gosh, but let me tell you, you're so great, you're so this, you're so that. You don't need to say that to me, I was in the military. I mean, <laughs> You ain't going to say anything close to what the military people told me or my father told me. You're just not. And if a person played sports, are you kidding? And, and I'm talking sports like, and the person's tough. Because some people hate sports because they wanted to get scholarship. But I'm talking people that really played and they really, really played. They can take it. And so you ask the question, I don't know your situation. I don't know how old you are. I don't know where you're at. I don't know if you're doing good in life or not or you're disciplined or not. 
but I recommend it to most people. Albert Prasadio, by the way, if you guys are watching Albert right there, he's putting an event together called Driven Event. I will be speaking at that event. Albert, the dates are in September. I believe I'll be speaking at that event in September. It'll be myself, Cardone, Ty Lopez, Brad Lee, and a few other people that'll be there. Uh, I wouldn't, I don't do a lot of speaking engagements. Many of you know it. I get invited to hundreds. I don't do speaking engagements. I don't do any kind of speaking engagements because I have no desire to be known as a motivational speaker. I'm a, I'm a thought, I'm, a, I'm not a, mo motivational speaker was never my goal. I never wanted to be the motivational speaker. But I, I chose to do that one because I'm a big believer of, uh, uh, what do you call it, of Albert. Albert's a good guy. His uh, girl, Sil, just really good people, man. Really, really, really good people. So that's why I said yes. So if Albert, that was a shout out for you, buddy. If you see the link that he posted there, go to his link and find out about it. I don't know uh, um, whether the event sold out or not, but I would go hook up with those guys. I'll be speaking at that event. I'll be talking about some strategies for business. So, okay, let's continue. So I addressed the question here on this side. Let's go on this side with Facebook this time. Pat, who's been the most intimidating interview <laughs> you've had? Derek Smith. Okay, good question. <laughs> Who has been the most intimidating interview you've ever had? Well, first of all, I'll give you two answers to that. One, it was probably my first interview I did because like, why am I interviewing people? And it was uh, uh, Steve Wozniak when I interviewed the founder of Apple in front of 500 people, 600 people. And we had a blast and Steve Wozniak comes in. I'm only going to speak for one hour and that's it. And he comes in, and next thing you know, we go, and we can't even stop talking. We got him a Commodore, you know, not Commodore, the original Apple, uh, uh, um, you know, computer that he made. We had him sign it. He looked at it like a little baby, and he stayed till 1 o'clock in the morning talking to everybody. But Steve Wozniak was probably the first one that made me nervous. And then um, this one, I don't know if I would say it was nervous, but it was me sitting down with somebody who is so confrontational right off the bat that it was for myself to test myself. You know, a, a lot of these interviews I do, I don't think people really realize. I'm working on my project that I have that's 15, 20 years from now. And these guys are really, these situations, I mean, like tomorrow, Ron Paul's interview comes out tomorrow. Let me tell you, Ron Paul's interview tomorrow is insane. Some of you guys don't know who Ron Paul is. Some of you guys, he's been on the cover of Time Magazine, ran for president as a libertarian he ran for president as a republican twice his son is Rand paul who could one day be the president but ron paul was a doctor he gave birth to over four thousand babies and was a former congressman and this guy's ideas were insane and we talked about marijuana we talked about trump we talked about mark cuban we talked about heroin came up i mean we talked about so many crazy ideas but the one that was crazy to me was uh, 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 Gloria Allred. If you haven't watched the interview with Gloria Allred, we probably were face-to-face -face heated for 30 minutes straight. <laughs> and Gloria Allred to me is insane. Here's what I would tell you. Gloria Allred to me is insane. So if you, if you want to be entertained tonight, go watch Gloria Allred. Some people say, well, Pat, I thought you killed it. I thought you did so great and you held your head. Own when you went against somebody that suits so many men and men are so frightened of her. How did you sit against somebody like that? And, you know, she sued and she's won a quarter of a billion dollars in sexual harassment charges. Well, how come you weren't scared? And then some said, oh my gosh, Pat, Pat, when I looked at her, she was just better at the legal and questioning and she wouldn't answer a single question. You can make up your own mind. But I grew. And so I actually enjoyed the interview with Gloria Alvarez. I hope, good question, by the way. Good question. Uh, okay, I'm going to go to a question here on uh, Instagram. Okay, how do you structure? Can I follow you for a day? You know, a lot of people make that request to follow me for a day. You would probably need to follow me for a month to really learn and see exactly what I do. But a day won't do you a lot. You would need to be with me for a month to know exactly what's going on. World Shaker, Patrick Bay, David Anthony, my man, thank you. World Changers, King, Frank, MMA. We got a lot of loyal people on this side. Uh, what should I do to improve? Albert Prosadio. This is a guy that makes $300,000 a month, owns properties all over the country, is asking me what he should do to improve. Um, and he drives a yellow Ferrari, a red Ferrari. He's got a Rolls Royce, and he's got two Rolls Royce, I believe. Right? And he lives, you know, lives in a beautiful place in Beverly Hills or Hollywood. What should I do to improve? Albert, I think your question is a completely different question on what to do to improve. 
Uh, I would tell you at the highest level of improving in business, like I see a lot of people say, well, Pat, who, who do, you, do you relate more to this guy or do you relate more to that guy or do you relate more to this guy? Uh, look, you'll come up and uh, the five steps of moving up and making money, five steps of moving up and making money. Um, first one is you learn how to be an employee and you keep a job and you make money, okay? You make five, you know, my first job paid me three twenty-five an hour. I worked at haagen okay? Now, prior to that, I was making my first way of making money. I made uh, five fennig per beer bottle. I turned in at a swimming pool in Erlang, and I was 10 years old. That's how I bought my first Super Nintendo, right? Well, my first job was haagen $3.25. So the first level you have to learn is um, how to be an employee, okay? Then after learning how to be an employee is you have to learn how to sell. And selling is hard because if you don't sell, you don't make money. You don't, you know, you've got no food on the table. So selling is number two. Then after selling comes being a sales manager, learning how to sales leader, learning how to lead other salespeople. So you're running an office, you got 10 salespeople, 20 salespeople, 15 salespeople. How do you lead them, right? And how do you create a duplicatable system that another person can go out there and take the scripts and the objections and the FAQs and still be able to overcome those objections and know how to relate to a human being and human nature and still not be too pushy, but be assertive and ask the question and not go away, being afraid of asking for the clothes and asking for the check and not waiting one more appointment to ask for the check. And how do you ask the check sooner? And how do you talk to a person that's a $50 million guy versus a $5 million guy versus a $100,000 guy versus a $30,000 a year salary guy? These are all different. And these are things you teach them, right? And which by the way, after tens of thousands of emails about starting the sales course, I'm not going to give you a timeline, but it's probably going to be in the next 6 to 12 months. I'm putting some stuff together. I don't know when it'll be. It'll be a course between $500 to $1,000 online, and I'm just going to unveil all my secrets on what I'm doing with selling. So, uh, 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 so you learn how to be a sales leader, right? After that, you learn how to be a business owner. Business owner is different than being a sales leader. Why? You have to pay a salary to an assistant. You have to keep her happy. You have to train her to do certain things, and you have to hire a compliance person or that person or this person or market or and all these other things. And you have to learn how to pay rent and your latent rent and phone and people want better place to work in and health insurance. Oh my gosh, what do I do with health insurance? You don't offer health insurance. You lose people. Should I offer health insurance? $400 per person. It's going up because of Obamacare. How do I? Then you learn how to become a business owner and then you learn how to be a CEO, right? It all depends at what level you're at. But you know, Albert, if there's one thing I will tell you that will constantly take you to the next level in life is learning how to build leaders. Nothing is above that. Parenting is leadership development. Your wife, your husband, your parents, your family, as they get older, it's leadership development because you're gonna have to lead your mom, your dad, your sister, your siblings, especially if you're the biggest earner in your family. You're gonna have to lead your cousins. You're going to have to lead your community. You're going to have to lead your nationality. As a Hispanic person, I know that means a lot to you. You're going to have to lead your people in that area as well. Um, but it's all leadership development. You give me somebody that knows how to build leaders. Give me five of those. We can take over the world if we wanted to. Somebody who is firmly bought into a cause, a mission. Give me five people who have fully bought into any mission. You know, We'll build an empire together. Truly, we'll build an empire together, whatever that empire is. And we're planning on building a lot of big empires. I got a lot of crazy projects that we're working on right now. I mean, everybody at this point knows what I do. I'm the CEO of PHP agency, and we're growing. Next last month's last quarter we had was an insane quarter that we had. Well, we got some crazy leaders in the company. We got some wild initiatives right now. Our convention in two months, in five weeks at the in Vegas. You know, my friend Kevin Hart's going to be at the event. Yeah, Kevin Hart. I mean, Kevin Hart's got 150 million followers. We're the only corporation that he's doing a private event for. He changed his tour dates just to hit this event for us. We're trying to play big. But the reason for that is because the one skill I got obsessed with getting better at, and I wanted to constantly get better at this, and I I'm, I'm, can't wait to see what version of me is going to be at 45 years old and 50 years old at 55 because this is not... You know, the only time you, you're, you're, you, this is not a game you'll ever master because human beings change and they're different. One is 30 years old, married to a 32 year old woman and her family is different and the way she believes in him. And so when they go to sleep at night and their conflicts and one is that everybody's so complicated, human beings. So that, that's an art that's so exciting. It's like a puzzle you're constantly trying to figure out. And I love puzzles. I love Sudoku. I love, you know, backgammon. I love things about figuring out puzzles and things to figure out. So leadership development 
would be the one I would tell you. Albert, guys, I will do two more questions and I'm gonna send you off because I gotta prepare for a very big conference call tomorrow that we have. And so I got two more questions. I'm gonna do one on Facebook, but you gotta give me the best one. So I'm gonna to listen to a lot of them, then I'm gonna pick the best one. One on Facebook, one on Instagram, then I'm gonna wish you a good night and we will go from there. Uh, the share a hater challenge story you had starting PHP. Ooh, that would be a good one right there. Um, so I'll give you one. I'll give you one. I'll give you a really good one. So when we first started uh, 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 PHP, our insurance company, I had a guy that um, came to my office. This is an agent I was trying to recruit uh, for a while. Quality guy. He was a former mayor of Palmdale. Okay. Um, he looked good, sharp. Probably his best year ever was 60000 70000 80000 all year income. Never made a lot of money, but quality man, quality guy. And a guy he worked with was a competitor who had been in a business for a long time. And he had a business that had been around for probably 20, 2009, 1990, 19 years at that time. And he had been in the business prior to that for another 10 years. So he had been in the business for 29 years and had not been in business for that long, probably like seven, eight years. And he started saying, you have no idea what you're doing. You have clueless. and So one day this guy calls a meeting after we've been on for five days. We've been around for five days. This guy comes and sits right next to me with, at that time, my number one guy at the time, who's still around, he's doing very well for him, so he's gonna make a million dollar year income this year. But he's sitting next to me right there. And this guy comes with his girlfriend, okay? I'll never forget this. I will never forget this. Everybody wanted us to go out of business. Every, we had so many competitors in San Fernando Valley. They called the fire department on us. They shut down my office, you know? I had the chief of fire department at my office fining me all the time. It was, you know, we had a lot of haters, which is fine because what I was doing was pissing off a lot of people. What they're doing, I don't take it personally, but we had a lot of haters. You know, we had, uh, it's just very, very strange stories. I mean, I, I, I would be, we would be doing meetings at a depart board of realty, which was a very dirty place for real estate in Northbridge. We were doing, you know, our sales trainings at a CSUN, Cal State Northridge. We did it at a Braemar Country Club, and our guys were spending money they didn't have, okay? So this guy comes and sits in front of me, and he brings his girlfriend. He's probably 10 years older than me. I would say maybe 10 or 15 years older than me. And he sits in front of me, and there are a lot of sites. I have a lot of different sites. Most of you haven't seen certain sites of mine, but... You've seen the sides of content I create or write. Tim, some of you guys, if you work closely with me, if you ask people who have worked closely with me, they'll probably be able to tell you some different kind of stories about me. So this guy comes and he sits in front of me and he starts saying, so, so you decided to start your own, why don't you come to us? And da, 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 da. He says, look, I want you to know what you're doing is the worst decision you made for the people. So tell me why. He says, do you know what's going to happen to him? He doesn't know what decision you made. He's seven years, eight years younger than you. How could you make a decision like this and make a guy like that follow you? How could you make a decision like this knowing you're going to be out of business in three to six months? Do you not realize everybody's going to sue you? Everybody's going to put you out of business. Your life savings, everything. But I'm not worried about you losing everything. You'll figure a way to come back up. All of these people here, they're going to lose everything. They're going to be on the streets. They're going to lose their licenses. And he started putting fear. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he's taking a deep breath. So he's saying all this stuff to my face, in my house, in my office. And I got, I'm, I'm Middle Eastern, and I'm half a Syrian, half Armenian. Our blood is pretty hot. Well, you don't come to my house and talk to me like that. I give you respect. I give everybody respect. But you don't come to my house talking to me like that, right? Okay, no problem. So I said, really? He said, yes. And he looks at the guy, my number one guy at the time. And he says, how do you feel about this whole thing? And his name is George. George is sitting on the couch. And I look at George. And George's kind of like, oh my gosh, you know. Why is he saying these kinds of things? And look, at that time, there was a 90% chance we were going to go out of business. So he's not lying. 
So in my mind, you ever seen one of these movies where you're kind of looking at the guy and they show two scenes. One scene is the guy jumps out and just throws the guy outside the window and sees him dropping like 10 stories and pow, he falls. That's what I visualize in my head. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I can tell you vividly where I was sitting, how I was sitting. So I looked at him and he had a beautiful girlfriend. I looked at him. I looked at his girlfriend. I said, what's your name? She gave me her name. I said, I want you to tell you, I want you to know something. She said, what's that? I said, you're going to talk about this meeting for the rest of your life. She said, really? I said, yes. I said, you're going to leave this man here very soon. Why do you say that? So let me tell you why. So I've listened to your bullshit here this entire time. Your girl's going to have to listen to my truth here, but this ain't bullshit. I said, this guy has the audacity to come to my house and tell us we're not going to be in business. He has no idea who we are. I said, watch how many markets we're going to get into. I said, the world's going to know about what we're doing. By the way, at that time, I wasn't on Facebook. I wasn't on anything. I didn't have a YouTube account. We were nobodies. 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 Was I a millionaire at that time? Yeah, not even a probably multimillionaire. But I'm just a guy coming up. I put my entire life savings in it. So if you want to talk about net cash, I got nothing to my name. I have a half a million dollars to my name. And he says all this stuff to me. I said, but I'm going to tell you something. You're going to eat your words and it's going to sting. It's going to hurt so bad. You are going to regret this for the rest of your life. You just don't say things like that to me, right? So I look at George. I said, look, this is going to be very normal. We're going to hear this many, many times. You know what's the craziest thing about what happened with this guy? Let me tell you what happened with this guy. Six years later, he calls me. Six and a half years later, he calls me. And a guy named Dr. Cooper says, this guy wants to talk to you. I said, really? I said, yeah. So said, okay. What do you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about? I said, I don't know, Pat, but he says he really wants to talk to you. Let's get on the phone. So we get on the phone. I said, what do you want to talk about? He says, do you remember our conversation? I said, what do you mean do I remember our conversation? Of course I remember our conversation. What's your purpose? What are you calling me for? At this point, we got a couple thousand agents. So like everybody knows we're cranking it. But we're not yet. We haven't raised $10 million. We haven't yet. Like, but we're doing good. We're coming up. Like the phases of us almost going out of business were past. He says, I just want to let you know, man. I'll never forget the meeting, and I cannot believe everything you said became a reality. I said, you still with your girlfriend? He said, no. I said, she's smart. And obviously, I teased him a little bit. And he says, would it be okay with you if I came and started working with your firm? So let me think about it. And I got back to him. You know why I tell you this story? Whoever asked the question, I have no idea who asked the question, but good question. You know why I tell you this story? Let me tell you why I tell you this story. I had two guys. One guy came in the other day. He's a uh, managing director, a guy uh, uh, at man, uh, one of their New York Life best agents just came to us. And a managing director at New York Life. Obviously, we've talked to the people at the board because the board, we've talked to New York Life's board people. But this guy's a managing director, makes a couple million dollars a year. And he says, you, you know, the person tells me, you know, the entire conversation over there is that you're the wolf of life insurance. So I'm the wolf of life insurance. So what do you mean I'm the wolf of life insurance industry? So you're the wolf of life, life insurance industry. I said, I'm the wolf of life insurance industry. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Then another guy from New York, another guy who's in New York, they're headquartered in New York. This other guy calls and he says, hey, how does it feel being the most hated guy in the life insurance industry? I said, hated guy. Yeah. Okay. I'm good. This was a couple months ago, but it also happened again this last week. And um, hated guy. The biggest life insurance magazine in America that has 150,000 subscribers to it interviewed me. They did a video called Leaders of the Industry. You can go on YouTube and just type in the word Leaders of the Industry. You'll see how they, they interviewed. They did, brought an actor who's been in many different movies. He did, the he did a phenomenal job. Matt Walton, you search him. He's been on many, many different movies. To come and tell the story of PHP and value attainment, right? But two months in a row, they put me on, uh, on uh, Insurance News Net magazine, and they put me on the cover of the magazine, on Insurance Net magazine, cover of the magazine, which I'm speaking forward to because there's a lot of people that, <laughs> you know, are paying to just come and see the man that has shook up the life insurance industry. Most of you guys are not in the industry, so to you, it doesn't really mean a lot to you. But I hope you do this in your own industry. So now they want to do a cover story on us and they do the cover story and they're telling them, talking about what we're doing. 
Seven and a half years ago, that same insurance company, insurance magazine came and wanted me to pay them $125,000 for me to do an advertorial in their magazine as an advertorial, not a cover story. I told them, I'm, I won't pay you $125,000. So you're going to come and ask me to do a story for free. Your CEO is going to call me. And that's exactly what happened. She was a stud. He's a good quality guy. He believes in insurance. His dad was an insurance guy. His grandfather was an insurance guy. And we're going to shake it up. And so I got a good memory. So even these Facebook lives, a lot of people log on with fake names, but they're my enemies, competitors, and they listen. And I know you're watching this and you know who you are. And I don't mind it because the market is that big and our vision is just insane. And no one knows what we're thinking about right now. Nobody does. And so what does this mean to the rest of you guys that are not in the business? Let me tell you what it means. Remember those conversations of haters, man. Never forget them. I don't forget them. I don't forget them. I just plan on turning them into celebrities one day. Just think about that. Turn your haters into celebrities one day. And if you don't know what that means, go think about it. Because I got a long list and I got a good memory. I got a good memory. I remember conversations. I remember people that couldn't look me in my eyes. I remember the fake. I remember all the hate. I remember friends that acted like friends and 10 seconds after getting off the call, they called and hated on me for an hour. And then that other person that listened was a re real friend. I, would, I just remember all those names. I remember all those conversations. And that's why every entrepreneur's gas station is that. You need every kind of fuel. Dwayne Johnson, when I spoke to the Lakers, you know what he said to them? He said, I remember what everybody said about me while I was coming up. He said, when I went and met with William Morris, I told him, I said, I'm going to be Will Smith except bigger. And I remember who laughed at it. He said, I remember. He says, I think you should remember it. I don't know. I you remember it. He said, I got angry. I think it's okay to get angry. That's what Dwayne Johnson is saying to the Lakers. <laughs> Again, that's me. So, Maybe there was something in that message that you needed to hear that has nothing to do with insurance, but you're going to go out there and do it for your life. I'm all good with it. I just can't wait to see you at the first live conference, Value Tamer, once we cross a million subs. Cannot wait to hear you there. By the way, for everybody that follows a lot of different YouTube channels and you're wondering like how people grow, go on a YouTube, go on a website called Social Blade. Social Blade is like the Equifax, the Experian of YouTube and Twitter accounts. You can see exactly how many followers everybody gets on any given day on Social Blade. And whenever you see certain accounts that all of a sudden explode and get 30,000 subscribers in a day, but they got 10,000 views, those are fake subscribers they bought. Don't be fooled by fake YouTube accounts. There's a lot of fake YouTube accounts. We don't advertise a penny on our YouTube account today. It's growing. And once we cross a million subs, I can't wait to meet you at the first Value Team Live conference. The tickets, I'm telling you in advance, it's going to be a $1,000 type of tickets. I mean, upwards higher than that because some of the guys are going to sit down. I'm going to look at business plans. We're not, this is not going to be a cheapy 99 a week. You come to spend because two and a half days, I'm putting a lot of content together. But you're going to leave a whole different human being when you come there. And by the way, I don't have nothing to sell you. I don't have to go buy something. I have nothing. I'm just telling you. Once we cross a million subs, 120 days after that, we'll be doing our first live event. I'm going to ask one last question for Instagram, and I'm going to wish you a happy... A good evening. Okay, if anybody, Instagram, it's your turn. If you don't have questions, I'm going straight to Facebook because Facebook's posting a bunch of questions here. Patrick, give me two, three songs that pump you up and make you feel great when they come in. I'm an old school guy, man. I'm not like, you know, if I'm working out, you know, I like DMX, you know, I like working out. To me, this one, this one's going to be strange. Like Brenda's got a baby fires me up when I'm working out. I know that sounds crazy to some of you. Um, go for it to me is just a, that, that one is always another one was uh, fall in love with music fall in love with dance fall in love with everything that makes you want to dance uh, take it I mean that song is a Euro mix but nobody knows that song that fires me up um, I, I, I got weird type of music man you're gonna again you're gonna think I'm weird if I tell you the kind of music I listen to that that gets me to work out Sevan Broni I don't work out to Moeen but I do listen to that a lot. He would know that. Okay. Uh, love yourself and lose yourself. I mean, I'm absolutely. What do you think about starting the Shopify business for a first timer? It's fine, but it's, you know, I'm interested in businesses, but that's fine. As a first timer, it's no, no big deal. 
Euromix, that's right, that's what it's called. Any other questions on Instagram? If you ain't got it, I'm going to Facebook because these guys are, these guys got some questions here. What do you do to surround by difficulties in finance? No parent, no support in colleges. Do you recommend journals to track my moves as long as I make a few good things? What is the most difficult thing about business? Um, who, where do you see the U.S. as a country in 50 years? Have women ever been a problem? Have women ever been a problem? Hmm. How about we talk about that? Anybody want to hear about have women ever been a problem in my life? You want to hear that or you want to go to it? If you want to hear that, I'll talk about that. If, any, if five people say yes back to back to back, I'll talk about have women ever been a problem in my life. And I'm, I'm transparent, so that one can be pretty exciting for some of you guys. Okay, people don't want to see that. We'll skip to another one. Let's see what else we got. How do you handle obstacles? Uh, 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 da, 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 da. Uh, John Mason says yes. Some people say no. What do you think about MCA? Uh, this could be interesting. Okay, I mean, I'm getting a, if you Instagram. You give me a lot of hearts. I'll do the woman have been a problem in my life. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Okay, all right. I guess you guys want it. All right, I'm going to do this and I'm going to send you guys off. Here we go. So, right, let me take something out. Hang on one second. I'm going to show you something here. back. I am not gone, but I'm going to show you something. I have to get something out of my safe. Hopefully you didn't see everything that's in my safe. Some of you guys on Instagram do, but Facebook, you couldn't see it. Okay. Have women ever been a, uh, you ready to be entertained? Are you okay to be entertained or what? Because this could be a little bit of entertainment for you guys as well. Okay. So, um, absolutely. So for me, my biggest distraction uh, was that. That was my biggest. Everybody has a distraction. For some, it's you know video games. For some, it's um, you know, other things, they're lazy, they're this, they're that. For me, it was women. I partied hardcore in, in the army. It was something I uh, really had a good time with. And um, even when I got into business, I was still going through it. And I had a relationship that didn't work out. I was broke as hell. I had $49,000 in debt. That didn't work out. And it was confusing. And initially, when I was building my business, I ended up dating my former boss and we were together for two and a half, three years, but it was ruckus issues. And uh, I've always appreciated a beautiful woman, man. Let me tell you, I mean, there's nothing like perfection. You know, when you see what the man upstairs creates, like you almost sometimes ask yourself, God, why would you make something that beautiful to distract, right? And for men, if you're a man, maybe you relate to this if you're not, you know, uh, you know, you look at you look at a girl and you're really trying to pull your head in like, oh my gosh, I was working out yesterday. I'm like, wow, you know, these gyms, I, either everybody's getting more in shape or the market over here is just prettier than everywhere else. But uh, beautiful women are everywhere. Beautiful, handsome men are everywhere. Attractive people are everywhere. So for me, I wanted to figure one thing out. I was never a drug guy. Although a lot of my friends were. I lost my best friend to overdose. And he did a lot. Pot, you know, pretty much everything. He did everything. And at the end, what got him was the most difficult drug to get off of, which nowadays it's harder than heroin. It was Vicodin. But um, I never liked drugs. I ne never was a fan of it. You know, I would drink in the army because it was like an escape and you would dance better. And I used to dance a lot and heavy, heavy dancing. And um, if those videos ever come out, I'm telling you, you would never look at me the same way again. Um, but thank God we didn't have smartphones back in the days. Thank God we didn't have smartphones back in the days because valuetainment would only be entertainment. It wouldn't be valuetainment. It'd just be entertainment. So, you know, I wanted to be able to control my biggest desire, like that temptation. I wanted to get a hold of that. And so for me, that was it. I wanted to get a hold of and control my biggest desire, and that was women. 
There's nothing like a beautiful, beautiful woman to me, right? So here's what happened. This book is what happened to me. A woman named Sandra, Patty, who was my assistant when she was eight months pregnant, told me, Pat, I, today on the radio, this guy was talking about a book called, you know, 101 Questions to Ask Before You Get Engaged. I said, listen, Patty, I made my decision. I'm not getting married. She said, what do you mean? I said, I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not the married type. I and mean, it's just not a, I don't want to get married, you know. I have to change the way I, like, I'm just, this is how I am. And I'm just, I'm, you know, I've got big plans, big goals in my life. And it's just complicated. And you have to go get along with their family. I don't want to get along with your family. But what if I don't like your mom and dad? I'm going to tell them off if I don't like them. Just give me a flipping break. More politics, I just can't stand games, and you want me to get married, which is the biggest game of all time, because you gotta go places and act like you like people who you really don't like. Give me a break. I'm done with this thing here. I'm just not doing it, okay? So she says, look, just, you know, it works. And da, da, da. I'm like, don't sell me on the concept of marriage. I'm good. I actually enjoy my own company. I can go to movies by myself, and I can have a good time, seriously. And uh, I can talk to myself in the car as if I'm having a conversation with myself and I enjoy my own conversation. Sometimes I enjoy my own conversations more than my conversations with other people. It's so fun I'm telling myself. So she says, you just got to read this book. And because I said, have you read it? No, but it was on the radio. Maybe it's a sign. So I got this book. Okay. Now, it's filled out. You ain't going to be able to see the answers, but it's filled out because I answered every single question. Okay. So it's 101 questions. The questions are sick. You ready? If something really bothered you about me, how would you go about expressing it to me? What a great question, right? Um, what was the best... Ex okay, let me give you another one here. What television programs and movies have made an impact on your life and why? Okay, whatever. You know, uh, uh, what has been the greatest amount of debt you've experienced? Here's about debt. Like, why do you want to know about my debt? Well, freaking, I'm about to get engaged to you. Your debt is my debt, right? If you got an IRS tax lien, I'm going to pay for it because we're going to, taxes we're going to do together, unless we're not, then it's a different story. Everyone brings some baggage into the relationship. What baggage are you bringing and would it fit in a catch case, a carry on bag, a small suitcase, or a trunk? <laughs> We would like to have your baggage fit in an attache case, but nowadays there are expandable cases. Baggage could be rejections, abuse, promiscuity, homosexuality, da, 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 all this stuff. What's important is knowing there's baggage, identifying its effect, and taking corrective steps to move forward in life. My baggage is written on that page, by the way, just so you know. You couldn't see it, could you? No, you couldn't see it from that angle. I mean, some crazy baggage, by the way, right? Okay. You know what this did to me? I got a chance to figure myself out. And so I went and did this exercise with four other girls that, you know, I was interested in. And did that led to me having three kids sleeping upstairs right now. And I have uh, joined the institution of marriage. And I married one of the most beautiful face to me is very critical. She may have one of the most incredible faces I've ever seen in my life. Maybe the most incredible face. That face melts you. And the first time I saw that face was in June of 02. I was in another relation, would have dropped a gorgeous girl as well. But when I saw this face, I'm like, wow. She looks like she's the right hand girl to God in heaven as an angel. I said, cool. Now, at that time, my mind went to a whole different place as an angel. It's kind of like, wow, I wonder how this angel is in bed. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. You know, men were weird, but that's what you get with me. I have no sugar coating, man. This is who I am. Okay? So anyways, for some of you, you're like, Pat, I don't care about women. I mean, that, that's, that's not my struggle. I am a woman. And how dare you come across as a male chauvinist and say he does all this other stuff. Go watch the glory all of it. You sound like you would enjoy that video. You know, and for some of you that are saying that's something I do struggle with. For some of you, maybe video games. For some of you, maybe drugs, alcohol, partying, clubs, all this other stuff. You better get a, get a hold of whatever controls you. If you don't, forget about your dreams and goals at the highest level. Forget about it. Now, listen, I'm not sitting here telling you. Says, I've been married for nine years, and it ain't easy. 
I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you we're going to be married for 40, 50 years. I'm not giving you guarantees and giving one of these spiritual Christian chair, church talks that, oh, my, my marriage is perfect. We fight every single week. Every month, we have a solid fight. Every week, we have fights. But I had to figure out areas that were holding me back the most. And that was one of them. So anyways, having said that, we covered a lot tonight. This is probably a Facebook Live some other people would enjoy watching. I think you were entertained. I think you got some value. And I think I got some good questions from you guys again. If you guys come at this pace with these types of questions, we may do it again next Sunday. Although next Sunday, I may be, well, I don't know, I'm going to be out of time. Maybe, able to, I don't, maybe, maybe we'll do it again next Sunday. But, uh, you know, appreciate you guys for sticking around this long. I know not a lot of people did. Obviously, this went a lot longer than I was expecting it to do on Instagram. I came back up and got you guys because I couldn't get your questions. But we did now. And so, uh, by the way, if you don't follow me on Twitter, a lot of people ask me questions. I said, Pat, you haven't been responding to the questions I post on um, Facebook. Send me a tweet. Go follow me on Twitter, at Patrick B. David. And uh, I don't know. Let me know what you took away from tonight's Facebook and Instagram live that we did. And with that being said, much love to all of you for listening. Have a good night. Let's have a killer week this week, everybody. Love you all.